how's it going? So today I have what I believe to be a magician fooler. This is an incredibly powerful card trick and I think you guys are going to love it. Do me a favor, after the performance, go straight down to the comment section and let me know if this fooled you. The very first time that I saw this definitely fooled me. Uh, after re-watching the performance several times and applying some of my basic knowledge I've learned from card magic over the years, I was able to figure it out. But nevertheless, here is what the trick looks like. So of course, just like any trick on my channel, uh, Card Tricks 8, that's uh, in the name. We need a deck of cards. So we can start off by giving the deck a little bit of a shuffle here just to ensure that all of the cards are completely mixed up. In fact, just to really keep things honest, I'll even give the cards uh, one of those uh, riffle shuffles that you would see in the casinos, just to really, really make sure um, none of us can know the order of these cards. All right, give it a couple strip cuts you would see as well. Doesn't really matter how we uh, go about doing all of this good stuff. All right, so once the deck is completely mixed up, then we can begin. So, I'm going to have my spectator go ahead and just cut to absolutely any card in the deck, you know, maybe approximately halfway down in the deck. So the spectator themselves can come over and just cut anywhere that they want. And they're going to look and memorize the card that they cut to. So here is the card, just keep this card in mind and please do not forget it, all right? Now, for all of you magicians watching this, a lot of you might think, ooh, this is a marked deck. I can look at the marking here to tell you exactly what this card is. I can assure you, this is not a marked deck. If you don't believe me, ask Vinny, who goes by the card mechanic on YouTube, because this is his own deck, and even he can clarify, this is not a marked deck. But even if, even regardless, marked deck or not, I can still somehow maybe get a peek at this card and use it as a key card. A lot of you would think right away, that's how, the, that's how this trick works, that's the method. But we're going to disprove that, because we're going to take this pile and actually remove it from the equation. We will actually go ahead, place it inside the card box, sight unseen. The spectator themselves, still holding onto their pile, can now actually shuffle their card into the middle themselves. I could even be blindfolded at this point, really. It doesn't matter. They can shuffle the cards as much as they want. Overhand shuffle, they can go ahead. Uh, they can riffle the cards together if they want to. It doesn't really matter so long as we know that the cards are mixed up. Now, these are test conditions. There's no possible way now I can know what card they're just thinking of or where it is in the pack. So, I'm going to try to do a little bit of mind reading here. So, I'll take the pack for the very first time and I'm going to show the spectator little clumps of cards at a time. And when they see their card, I want them to just kind of scream inside their head, that's my card, that's it, you know, something like that. And as I go through here, really try to focus on all the details of your card. Really focus on the color. Really focus on that suit. Really focus on that value, okay? Really focus. So we'll go through the card just as so. All right. Really focus. Really, really focus for me. Really focus, really focus. Okay. Uh, I got a couple more here. Just look at those for me. Really, really focus. All right. So, as I was going through those cards, I was picking up little signals from you. And. I got a very, very strong feeling right off the bat that the card you're thinking of is a red card. Well, in this case, a purple card because the red suits are purple based on design. But you guys, nevertheless, understand what I'm saying. So that means it's a heart or a diamond. I think, I, I think it's a heart. I'm, I'm pretty confident the card you're thinking of is a heart. The value is always the toughest part to decipher, but um, I was getting some kind of some kind of vibe. It was more like mid pack, like maybe six of hearts, seven of hearts, eight of hearts, something like that. Oh, six, seven, eight, six, seven, eight. I'm feeling a stronger wavelength and directly in the center. I think the card that you're just thinking of is the seven 
of hearts. Anyways, guys, that is the trick. Again, please let me know. Did that fool you? Phenomenal trick. Regardless, fooled or not, step by step, I'm going to walk you through how to do this trick. And it's extremely simple. So let's get straight into the tutorial. All right, guys, hopefully you stuck around for the tutorial. So as you guys just saw, this is an amazing looking card trick. And the best part is it is ridiculously simple to do it's so easy that it's not even fair like honestly it's just that damn good the only skill really required is just being able to execute some false shuffles in the beginning but other than that the the rest of the trick is basically self-working it's it's beautiful it's absolutely great now before we get into um you know the mechanics the setup and all that stuff one thing i want to point out here is this is a trick that is more so built to show to a magician. Yes, you can show this to a regular person and it's still going to blow their mind. It's still a good trick. But the impact that it has on a regular spectator is going to be a little different than the impact it has on a magician. Because there are a lot of psychological subtleties in here designed for magicians. Because as you all know, the magician brain operates differently than, you know, a lay person's brain. So when a magician views this and tries to backtrack it there's just so many you know different factors in there that are going to conflict with one another really giving magicians a hard time breaking this down so there is a little bit of a setup that you are going to have to get into beforehand but it's very easy to do so for starters you want to remove ace through king of any suit that you would like i'm using hearts for this example but you can really use any suit you want it makes no difference whatsoever Set these off to the side for the time being. You're going to go through the deck and then you're going to count off 20 random cards. It does not matter what these cards are. It does not matter what order they are in as long as it is exactly 20 cards. This plays a big role in the method later on. Okay, so the setup is 20 random cards on top of your ace to king stack. Take the whole thing, put it on top of the remainder of the deck. And the remainder of the deck, doesn't matter what the cards are, doesn't matter what order they're in also, all right? So, this is the final setup. 20 random cards, your ace to king stack, and then the rest of the deck. Now, using this ace to king setup in the middle of the deck, um, it's actually a very deceptive principle used in a lot of tricks of this style. Um, it's its own principle, and I... For the life of me, cannot remember what the name of this principle is. So please, if you do know it, uh, comment it in the comment section below because it's pissing me off that I can't remember what it's called. I actually taught a trick using this principle in the past. It was a trick called Mind Mirror. I'll leave a link to that video somewhere on the screen or in the description box below because that's another magician fooler as well. All right. So the deck is set up as so and... Uh, here is how you're going to start off. Uh, you do want to give the appearance that the deck is mixed, so I would recommend getting into some false shuffles here. I like to use the push-through false shuffle, but it does not matter what false shuffles you do as long as whatever you do does not disturb the order of the entire deck. So I do uh, push-through, some false strip cuts. I even did one of these false overhand shuffles where I take off a big portion of the deck that I want to retain. Um peel off one card on an injog, shuffle the rest of the cards as normal, like this, push up and in on the injog card, giving me a big thumb break, shuffling everything above the break, like this, eventually dropping everything and taking the whole pack and throwing it back on top. And this will not disturb the order of the deck, as you can see. If you want to at this point, you can even display that the entire deck is mixed just as so. Uh, you don't want to spread through all the cards, you know, as normal. Otherwise, you would obviously uh, show that there's a stack in the middle there. So in order to hide that, you're just going to block push the deck once you get close to your stack. So once you start approaching the middle where your stack is, you're just going to push a big block of cards at once, just like this, and then continue spreading. And that hides uh, your stack of cards. So at full speed, it would look a little something like this all right very very quick little flash of the deck and it really looks like the deck is mixed up now before going any further i do want to discuss the psychological subtleties of these fall shuffles for a regular spectator you mixed up the deck this trick is fair 
that's all it's for. Obviously, that's what false shuffles are for, to convince the spectator that the deck is mixed. But for a magician, this has a different impact because no matter how good your false shuffle is, you could perform it to absolute perfection. Most magicians are still going to know that you're doing a false shuffle just because they know what to look for. They know the subtleties of what a false shuffle looks like versus a real shuffle. So magicians will catch you out on this. They're going to think to themselves, okay, he just did a false shuffle. That means the deck has to have some sort of setup. I may not know what that setup is, but he did a false shuffle. So I know there's a setup, but this is going to play a big part into fooling them when they try to reverse engineer everything later because they get to cut to any card, half of the deck gets completely removed from the trick. And then the half that is being used, they get to shuffle. They shuffle the cards. And not to mention, you as the magician never look at the faces of the cards. And this is what destroys the magician brain for this trick. Because they saw you do these false shuffles. So they're okay, oh, okay, he's using a setup here. I got this, I got this. But then... They get to shuffle the card, so they're going to think, wait, so he did a full shuffle, so there has to be a setup, but I shuffled. He got rid of half the deck, and the cards we're using, I shuffled them, so if there was a setup, I just destroyed any possible stack he could have had. But, but hold on, even if I didn't destroy the stack, he never even looked at the faces of the cards, he never looked at them, so... If there was a stack that I somehow didn't disturb with the shuffle, how could it be of any use if he never looked at the cards? That is the frustration magicians are going to feel in their brain. That's the thought process of this, and that's what makes this so good. But anyways, so your stack is in the middle, as I showed you before. So you're going to invite your spectator to go over and cut off anywhere that they want, however you want them to cut as close to the center of the deck as possible because you want to guarantee that they cut to one of the 13 cards in your stack. And this is very, very easy. They're going to cut to one of those cards like 90% of the time based on your language. What I like to do is I come in and I say, here, so the deck is mixed up. I want you to select a card in the fairest method possible. I want you to go ahead and just cut to any card in the deck and memorize the card you cut to. In fact, make this difficult for me. Go ahead and cut, you know, really close to the center for me. Something like that. I don't like to come out the gate and just say, okay, try to cut the cards in as close to half as possible because I feel like if I just, that's the first thing I say, it seems very restrictive and I really want them to cut halfway down. So rather than really putting an emphasis on that, I just casually throw it in. I'll start off by actually saying, yeah, go ahead and just cut the cards anywhere. Matter of fact, make this difficult for me. Try to cut as close to the center as possible so I can really have no idea what card you cut to. So subconsciously, they're just going to try their best to cut as close to half as possible. And as long as they do, they're going to nail a heart every single time. Watch, I'll give you a couple of examples. I'm just going to try to cut the cards as close to half as I can possibly get it. I should nail a heart every single time. Eight of hearts. Let's do it again. As close to half as I can get. <laughs> Eight of hearts again. What are the odds? Let's do it again. Six of hearts. All right, I'll do it one more time for you. So we just cut again here. Jack of hearts. So you can see as long as I try to cut as close to half, they're going to nail one of the hearts every single time. Now, on the off chance that they do happen to cut, you know, a small packet of cards where you know, okay, they definitely missed the card on my stack, or they cut a gigantic pile of cards where you know they went past your stack, here's what you do. So if they cut a really small portion of cards, say... Yeah, that's, you know, I'm, I could have seen some of those cards near the top. That'll be too easy. Try to cut a little bit deeper. Really make this difficult for me. And then they'll go ahead and they'll cut a bigger portion uh, of cards. Um, and then in this case, you can see hitting a heart. If they cut a gigantic uh, pile of cards like this and they go past your stack, here's what you would want to say. You're going to say, we're going to be going through some of those cards in a minute and that's going to take us forever. I don't want to bore you. Cut a little less, maybe around half or so. And then they'll feel inclined to cut less. So it feels completely justified. And again, you can see there's the eight of hearts as long as they try to cut to the center. So nevertheless, get them to cut as close to the center as possible to hit one of the cards in your stack. As long as they cut to a card in your stack, the trick is basically self-working. So watch. I'm going to cut close to middle here and let's see what I get. In this case, I got the jack of hearts. This is going to be the card for tutorial purposes. Now, 
At this point, I really have no clue what card that they've cut to. But all I know is they've cut to one of the cards in the stack. So they're going to cut, memorize the card, put it off to the side. Now, this is very important because you're going to want to change your pattern up depending on who you're performing for. In the performance, I was talking about, hey, maybe this was a marked card or I can use this as a key card. And I don't want you to think I can use this. So we're just going to remove this packet from the equation completely. You don't want to use this in your pattern if you're performing for a lay person. Because a lot of lay people probably don't know that marked cards even exist. And number two, key card. A lay person does not know what the key card principle is. They don't know what the hell that even means. So if you say that to them, they're going to look at you like you have 10 heads. It doesn't make sense. Don't say that if you're using... Um, if you're, you know, using a regular spectator, you would have to change your pattern up a little bit as to why you're going to get rid of this packet. Um, come up with something yourself. I really want you to, you know, be creative with it. All right. But if you're performing this for a magician, then this works like a charm. You could say, okay, so you might be thinking to yourself that I could use this card as a key card or maybe I had the deck in a stack so that I and I can use a marked card so the marking on this card can tell me what this card is and then I can know what the card is before it, your card, something like that. But one, I can guarantee you, I promise you, the cards are not marked. I give you my word and the cards really are not marked, by the way. But again, regardless of whether they're marked or not, I can still get a peek at this card and use it as a key card. Magicians will know what you're talking about, hence why this is so good. So let's get rid of this packet completely. So now... By you getting rid of this, you've just eliminated any possibility of marked cards and the key card principle. They know it's not possible, which makes this, again, so much harder for magicians to reverse engineer. But at this point, spectators know that the card is in the bottom of their cut pile. So they may think, okay, maybe there's a key card in this pile or there's some sort of stack in the top half of the deck, which there is. But we're going to completely destroy that idea, even though that's what we're using. Because you're going to now invite them to shuffle up the, the card as a jack of hearts again. Don't forget that. Now they can shuffle up the cards themselves. Again, this is what makes it so fooling now. Because the magician is going to be sitting here shuffling these cards. Thinking to themselves, how is this possible? If there was any stack here, any key card, anything. I just destroyed it by shuffling these cards. But again, you know, maybe they can possibly reverse engineer it if you were to take the cards and now spread through them and then, you know, pull out the selected card because maybe there's something to look for and they can maybe, maybe figure it out. But again, this is so fooling because once you take the cards back, you never actually look at the cards. You never look at the faces. So if there's a stack, how in the world could it be of any use to you? That's why it's so fooling. It's so good. But now... They're going to shuffle the cards, losing the card in the center. Magicians are going to, this is, it's, they have no clue how the hell you do it at this point, um, for the most part. So, how are you going to be able to read the spectator's mind? How are you going to figure out what card that they just cut to with it freely shuffled, no key cards, and you don't even look at the cards? Here's the method, guys, and when I tell you it is stupid simple, you're going to laugh. That it's, 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 it's not even funny. Remember how I said how you had to have exactly 20 cards on top of your stack and why that was important? All you're doing is when you're showing the cards, you know, to the spectators, telling them, hey, I want you to scream, you know, that's my card in your head, and really focus on the color of the card, really focus on the suit of your card, really focus on the value. All you're doing is counting how many cards they cut off. The number of cards that they cut off tells you exactly what card you, that they picked. Because you know they cut to a card in your stack, right? So, think of it this way. 20 cards. The next card down after the 20 random cards is your first card, which is a 1, an ace. So if they cut to an ace, that means they cut to 21 cards. If they cut to a 2... They cut to 22 cards. If they cut to the 3, they cut 23 cards. If they cut to the 4, they cut 24 cards. If they cut to the 5, they cut to 25 cards. So on and so forth. So you never have to look at the card. You just need to count how many cards you have in your hand. And that gives away what card they picked. It is that simple. So, Jack is worth 11 
um, in the deck of cards, right? So that would mean 20 plus an additional 11 cards instead of custody of the jack would be 31 cards. So you're just counting at this point. And I like to show it in groups of five. Just show the cards in groups of five. It makes it very easy to count the cards. Counting by five is very easy. So show them the five cards. Tell them to go ahead five cards at a time. Tell them to focus on their card. It doesn't matter where their card is. It makes no difference. You're just counting five, 10, 15. Obviously, you're not counting out loud. You're counting in your head. But also a little tip. Make sure you're talking and pattering while they're doing this. You don't want to just sit there in silence and go through cards. Otherwise, it's just awkward. It can get boring. So just make sure you're talking as you're doing this. 15. Again, you're saying this in your head. 20. So once I count 20 cards, now I'm really just focused on how many cards are left here. All right. So 25, I think to myself. Okay, 25. I'll show another five here. And um, they say 30. And then I see one more card. I say, okay, we got one more. I'll just show you that one. So I counted 31 cards. So I know that because there was 20 cards, they cut off an additional 11 cards as they cut off 31, meaning that the card that they cut to was the Jack of Hearts. And again, you don't need to look at the cards. And as you guys know, for tutorial purposes, it was indeed the Jack of Hearts. It is that goddamn simple. There should be a really any confusion here. I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but just in case there is, I'll even give you a visual representation of this, okay? This is 20 cards. So if they cut to the ace of hearts, that's 21 cards. If they cut to that two, 22. If they cut to the three, that's 23 cards. If they cut to the four, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. I think that visual representation kind of helps there. But here, um, I'll go through uh, this one more time. I won't look at the card. I'll just show... Actually, no, I won't even show you guys the card. I want to see if you can figure out what the card is with me, okay? So, I'm going to cut off as close to half as possible, and I'm going to put this off to the side. We'll get rid of these cards. We'll shuffle them up here. I'll we'll cut these. I don't want it. you guys to have an idea where it is. All right. So we mix it up. So I don't even know what the card is at this point. None of us know what this card is. You at home, me, I don't know what it is. But now I'm going to show the cards. Just count the cards as I go through here. Five. Ten. Fifteen. Twenty. Twenty-five. 29 cards so because it's 29 cards that's 20 plus an additional nine so we know the card that was cut to was what is it if you said the nine of hearts you would be correct and while you're practicing um if you want to make sure that you are a hundred percent correct and that you didn't screw up at this point go through this packet now right and look at all of the hearts if the card that you guessed is the largest valued heart, or again, whatever suit you're using in the pile, then you're correct. If for whatever reason it's not, you screwed up somewhere and you have to try to fix whatever mistake you made. But again, so I said the nine of hearts. If the nine of hearts is the largest valued heart in this pile, then I'm correct. So let's take a look just to be sure. So there's five of hearts, eight of hearts. How do all the hearts... I, I shuffled these cards and all the hearts ended up next to each other. How is that even possible? Uh, okay, that's that's insane. Let's just make it a little more random here just so you guys can really see what it would look like because they really would be scattered throughout. So I see five of hearts, eight of hearts, seven of hearts, six of hearts, nine of hearts, ace of hearts, two of hearts, four of hearts, three of hearts. And yeah, as you can see, the nine was the largest valued heart. So I know that I was correct. So that's what you can do when you're practicing. After you guess what card it is, spread through, see if the heart that you named is the largest valued heart in the pile, and that's how you would know if it was the card. And in, in case that confuses you for any reason, if you think about it logistically, they cut to any heart, right? And then the rest of the hearts are back here on this pile. And since they're in sequential order, this is 10, Jack, Queen, King. You know, all those are still here. So that means if they cut to the 9... No, everything nine and below would be over here. Hence why you want to make sure you look for the largest one when you're practicing. So for me, I look for the nine. That was the largest one. So I know that that is that. 
And then what's great about this is, again, they shuffled it, so any stack you had really was destroyed. Maybe not in that case, because somehow I shuffled the cards and all the damn hearts were together at the top. Somehow, I genuinely don't even know how that happened. But, um, in case the spectator or whatever, the, um, they want to go through the cards in the box, I don't really think they would. But, um, in case they really wanted to, you can pull it out and very briefly just give it a very quick shuffle. And so, yeah, go ahead and check them out. And then they'll spread through. They'll find nothing. They'll spread these. They'll find nothing. And you are left completely clean. Uh, but yeah, that is the trick. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. I think everything was pretty straightforward. But again, just like all my videos, if you are confused about anything, don't hesitate to drop it. Uh, to drop a question in the comment section below. I will make sure to answer and clear up any confusion that there might be. But that is going to be it for this video. Uh, I will see you guys in the next one. So Karchik8 signing off. Peace out.